concerns also all over the world as it concerns the restoration of PF and of course as it concerns the destruction of the damnable um, contraption called Nigeria because we have come with a mandate to restore the land of the rising sun and of course by the time the land of the rising sun is restored the damnable contraption called Nigeria must have to go down and we are here with a weapon of truth because it is a false entity we cannot continue to live in such a such an entity it's really really not acceptable by us we are the indigenous people of biafra led by mazin and Kanu and deputized by mazu chimafo we are here and we are reaching you from biafra land this morning my name is ngozi chukuka and my guest in the studio this morning is right as a bright good morning good morning you're welcome thank you okay mazu bright Uriaku will be educating us today he will be uh, turning to what we have here this morning of course, we always have something important, something good to discuss. We also have something really interesting to talk about because we will not relent until Biafra is restored. And we have just a weapon, which is a weapon of truth. Without the weapon of truth, we will be nowhere today. And of course, a weapon of truth is working faster than their ammunition, working faster than their AK-47, than their rifle, and you know all their armor tanks. And we'll keep saying the truth until Biafra is restored. Okay, this morning we've ensured we are on all our platforms. Our satellite TV is there. Uh, of course, we are on Facebook. We are on Periscope. We are on Twitter. We are on YouTube. So all you need to do is to share the program. That's your own bait. Share the program. Invite your friends to join you. Of course, uh, to watch this program. It is very, very important. Invite all your friends. Share it on your timeline for public to view. Share it also via their inbox. It is very, very important. You can as well copy the link and send to WhatsApp. And of course, um, you ensure your friends are watching with you as well. If you're on Twitter, keep tweeting the program. And of course, you will be calling us 45 minutes after now. For five minutes after now, you will call in to make your contribution. Very, very important. Let's hear you. Let's hear your take. Let's know what you think. Of course, we are going to be discussing something important. Of course, it's, it's been um, you know, a particular issue we've been talking about for the past uh, one month. And we must continue talking about it until the needful is done. It is very, very important. And of course, as we do this, we will also remember that we must boycott the election coming for next year. It is important. Election boycott must hold. It must hold. That is why we keep evangelizing. We keep spreading the gospel. We keep spreading the evangelism. We keep evangelizing to people. And of course, that is why we are transmitting simultaneously on Radio Biafra London this morning. So you call your friends, your families, your parents and uh, grandparents in the village and tell them to please tune in to Radio Biafra London this morning. We are everywhere. We ensure we reach to the unreached. We reach out to everyone because all must be carried along in this struggle. All must be carried along because no one must be left behind. Okay, thank you very much once again for joining us this morning. I repeat, I am Ngozi Chukwoka and we are reaching you from Biafra land this morning. Okay, um, Mazi Raku, we are going to look at something, a uh, headline, just one headline this morning and what's the headline? Say, Jibril of Sudan, Fanny Kayode, list 15 questions Buhari must answer to prove he is not dead. And of course, um, you know, we, we have set the pace. Our leader have been saying it. We knew how it started, what led to Operation Python Dance. And of course, after he resurfaced, he continued from here. He stopped. And up until now, I've expected um, the Nigerian government to react mm -hmm. to this. But they are not. Rather, they go to Poland. He goes to Poland and says, it is me. I, I am the one. You know, who knows if he said, I am I am Jibril or whoever. But I think this is, um, is an allegation that should have attracted a very strong reaction from the government. Why do you think uh, they've been silent over this? Uh, when, you, when you look at, uh, we say, the reaction from the government, actually, it is not a question of uh, whether Jibril is in Astorok. That one is clear. But it's a question now of who said it. Why should it be said? You know, it's about not uh, do, doing secret things and never allow it to surface. And that is why Nigeria is a lie. Everything about Nigeria is lies. 
So it, it, the issue is that they actually reacted by go sending Operation Python Dance 2 to the House of Mazin Namdekano. That is the kind of reaction you expect from the Nigerian government. They actually reacted by killing Biafrans, thousands of innocent Biafrans. They have actually reacted by the, uh, fighting everything to destroy the indigenous people of Biafra. That is the kind of reaction you expect you get from them. Because when we are talking about Nigerian government, who is the Nigerian government? Because uh, we, we, we know that in 2015, there was a, a problem in, in the evil contraction called Nigeria, after Nigeria expired 2014. And uh, it was uh, supposed to be that, yes, they are talking about democracy. And we felt that, yes, President Goodluck Jonathan was addressing an issue, the issue that had to do with the way forward if Nigeria was a country. Okay, the people that, of course, occupy the geographical entity was supposed to do something, and we knew about the 2015 uh, confab and all that. Then 2015, uh, when Buhari, the dead, dead, dead Buhari won the, uh, of course, uh, we know all the controversies that took place and how uh, he took over power. But that's not the issue today. The issue is that after uh, some period of time, uh, you know, nature has a role to play sometimes in life, the law of karma, you know, evil cannot continue. So nature played its role. And uh, when you see the man in Asorok today uh, that, that have been replaced after the death of Buhari has have been clearly narrated by Mazen Namdekano that this man fell sick and of course died in the process 2017 and precisely more than a year now that this man is no longer there they now brought a stranger and Mazen Namdekano it's not a question whether people know he has pointed it to the world. He has made the whole international community brought, drawn their attention, and even those who also belong to this evil contraction. So it's no longer a question of whether it is true or not, because the Nigerian government, you are talking about who are the government. The government is the man in our sort of today. The government is the cabal. And the only reaction you got from them was the killing that we got. A reaction that, why did you say that? That was the reaction. So, because you know that when uh, the former president uh, uh, that, that died, Yaradua died, and it, it was also a kind of situation where nobody should talk about it. But you know, it was the Biafrans were there, and of course, the former vice president was also, uh, 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 you know, we, uh, somebody had to fight. A Biafran need to stand up and fight for his uh, uh, brother, and that was why you see Dora Kunyere fighting for, um, of course, making it clear, pointing out that Yaradua was dead. If not, a similar thing would have happened. But but this time around, there was nobody who could actually take responsibility. They were expecting anything to happen, and somebody should have taken responsibility to say that this is actually what transpired. Because a good, no, a good number of them uh, in the political elites, a good number of them, the cabals actually planned the deal. But most of these political elites are aware of what happened, but they never say the truth because they, 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 they feel that, yes, they cannot touch the north. They cannot touch the cabals. And for that reason, it, it, it will, con will have continued over the years. But Mazin Namdekan pointed it out clearly and brought out overwhelming evidences. And none of these overwhelming evidences have been countered by the Nigerian government. Okay, if you said all these evidences are not true, why don't you face the press? Simple. Come out and address the people that you are supposed to be governing. He is not able to do that. So, you see, it's no longer a question of reaction. They have actually reacted, and their reaction is a clear evidence that all that Mazin and the Kanu said is true. And it's not that only that is true, the, uh, uh, there are evidences, all the evidences are there. And today, it's not longer a question of who is in Asorok. We know who is in Asorok. It's not a question of who takes responsibility. So it's a question of responsibility this time around. Who, uh, you know, just like uh, they saying that who bear the cart? Who bear the cart? That is the problem. Who would uh, uh, remove this thing in Asorok? Whose responsibility is it to remove the man in Asorok? So that is the question today. So when you're talking about the presidency, you're talking about the Nigerian government, remember that the face of the Nigerian government that we have seen, because that's what we have been trying to ad identify who actually is running the Nigerian government. That is the question we have been asking all the while. Because when we talk about Nigerian government in the past, the people thought it was Buhari that Buhari was there. He was the president. But of course, Aisha Buhari made it clear that there are two powerful men, those two strong men who are in charge over the affairs. And we talk about the cabals all the time. So. 
today it's no longer about whether the government is reacting actually they are reacting their reaction is they are coming after anybody who said it so it's not about them uh, they know that the, what Mazin and the Kanu said is true but the only reaction they have is sending their uh, troops sending their army Boko Haram is killing there they don't uh, touch them they only send army to anybody that identify with Mazin and the Kanu to anybody that said uh, for Joyce Mazin and the Kanu is saying the truth so it is about who takes responsibility today it's no longer about whether Jubril is, is an Asorok it's not a confirmed deal that Jubril is a man in Asorok all right, thank you very much. Uh, we have our reporter over there, um, Oge Friday, giving reporting from Ebony State. Let's get connected to him and uh, hear him out. Hello, Mazi Oge, are you there? Yes. Uh, good morning. Okay, from here, go ahead. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to join the program this morning. My name is Mazi Oge Friday. Mabakaliki province of Biafra land, fellow Biafra all over the world, wherever you are, depending on the time zone. From here, we say good morning to you. It's my pleasure, like I said before, to join the program this morning to talk to Biafra all over the world. Um, on November 27th, 2018, the court case that has been linking between the Nigerian police and the uh, the members of the uh, IPOB in Abakali province of Biafra land here yeah, was to be heard confidently as usual. Uh, the court magistrate, uh, Mrs. Ubeke, ought to listen or to hear the case, not uh, appear in the court to listen. Nevertheless, the matter was adjourned to today, 17th of December 2018. So unfortunately, we just got a notification from our council that the matter was not even seen among the listed cases to be heard today in the courts that the matter has been shifted to next year that there should come be the case that the case should be heard so and yesterday the 16th of november i'm sorry december 2018 the indigenous people of Biafra at Umbo went for evangelism at our Savior Catholic Church Parish, Umbo. It was very much wonderful. Uh, indeed, uh, there are people who are still genuine. Uh, the men of God who are out there who are still genuine. The Reverend Father, who is in charge of the parish, Reverend Father Emmanuel Ugupe. While the service was going on about the freedom of the nation and how the people of Biafra should join hands together to fight for their freedom, saying that this freedom is a fundamental human right. So the people of the church, in their hundreds and in a large number, Indeed, clamoring on how and where to be identified with IPUB as a result of that uh, evangelism and tense giving ceremony that was held yesterday at the church. That's uh, what we have here this morning from Abakaliki. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Of course, um, our, our clergymen are waking up. Of course. Uh, it's very important. Uh, yes, you know, anybody who is still sleeping must have been dead for a long time. Because uh, all, after all that has happened, after the church itself suffered more than any other people. Because when anything is happening, they are always the first hit because of uh, the Islamization agenda. They always take the heat to the church. And all the while we've been shouting and been talking about them. And uh, recently we've been receiving a lot of uh, changes because you see clergymen are now talk, uh, reasoning. There we are supposed to be the freedom fighters that we were supposed to know. Because if Christianity's ideology was what it, uh, that, uh, that we saw in the Bible, is what it's supposed to be, then you knew that uh, the clergymen that are in Biafra, and we are supposed to be at the forefront. They were supposed to carry the Biafra flag and take it straight and tell the world what is happening because Christianity is ab about good good and uh, uh, shunning evil. It's about living a good life. It's about the best of life. And so uh, uh, clergymen
men are supposed to be freedom fighters. They are naturally freedom fighters because they disown their life and are, uh, fight for the poor, fight the oppressed. But you know, in the past, the reverse has been the case when you look at the kind of Christianity you have in the Bible. Because the poor now are the ones feeding the rich, you know, the rich pastors. So, uh, but you see, in Biafra land, the good news Mazin and the Kano has brought, brought to Biafra land is changing a lot of things. The pastors you have today are beginning to wake up, are beginning to realize because, you know, sometimes people do things and they just think they can get away with it. But when the truth is said, uh, even those who think they, 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 are, they, they, they are super, powerful I now realize that without the people they cannot succeed so a good number of them are changing their thinking their way of thinking and I think I will give credit to Mazin Namdekano for his awakening all right thank you very much of course and that is why we must keep keep it on we all must continue to evangelize wherever you find yourself tell people about the election boycott tell people about Biafra freedom it is important uh, because Biafra must be restored very very soon and this generation must restore Biafra it's important you take note of that okay so still talking about the man in Asarok Jibril and talking about um, the reaction from the federal government we have other arms of government and um, don't you think these other arms of government ought to have done something we have the legislature we have the um, judiciary, judiciary. Uh, but none of them is saying anything you see, when, when you're looking at the arms of government that you have, they have been hijacked by the same cabal. You know, when you think that Buhari was the man in Asorok, a lot of changes we, we are going on. So that is why you, today you talk about the Fulanese. Don't you even see that the vice president himself knows what is happening? And he, 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 because he's a Fulani man, you know, he would also conceal the secret. He would join them because he would have also used it as a campaign strategy. But because he knows what is happening, he knows the whole thing, he knows about the cabal, and he's part of the system. So he would simply conceal and uh, help them to hide the evil. So every arm of government you see have been hijacked. The military, uh, normally, the, uh, is, if there were, Nigeria was supposed to be a country, you see that the judiciary and the uh, 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 legislatures were supposed to stand up. You were supposed to see a kind of system where the president would be summoned. It's, he was supposed to be summoned. But this kind, in this kind of case, you don't even have a right to talk about the president. Once you talk about the president, the next thing you see that the troop of army will come again into your house the following morning to shoot. Even if you're the senior president, we saw what happened to Bukola Saraki last time. We saw what, what happened to Enyin Nayabari. But we saw how what happened to senators. They were sending gunmen to their houses in the night. And of course, even in the, the Senate, we saw a lot of uh, fights has taken place in, uh, there in Abuja. And you see, why is it uh, all this fight? Just you there saying something. Because the system has been hijacked by cabals, by evil men. Because when we call them cabals, it is... It, it, it sounds simple. We are talking about evil men. When evil have reason to oppress if good, and of course th that tells you how much the, 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 the rotten Nigeria has been. You know, so when you have a situation as uh, well, deadly as what you have today, you have an impostor that have stayed in Asorok more than a year. That tells you the kind of country, the kind of place you have in Africa that they call Nigeria. So when you have an impostor, and it is clear of women evidences and the international communities are aware, and they are waiting for the people, the real people, because the president of France can down here and he was saying supporting us or something he said the people should handle the problem and president trump will not talk to him and he said uh, that he doesn't want to uh, uh, speak life with that lifeless thing they yeah. should never bring him to that life lesson to him again and of course he the international community no but whose responsibility is it the people and when we are talking about the people we are supposed to have if the legislators uh, legislative uh, thief arm of the government was working then they were supposed to be there if the uh, but this uh, uh, group the cabals you remember under president good luck jonathan he was saying it he said that when you are looking at boko haram because that those time they were still talking about boko haram they were still not showing boko haram he said boko haram you are talking about is in government because he took time to try, he wanted to actually understand what was happening. And he said, this Boko Haram you see are not just these boys in the bush. The Boko Haram you see are people in the government. They are not just ordinary people. They are the, uh, the Fulanese. And they are everywhere around you. They are in the government. They are in the legislature. They are, in the, they are everywhere. So 
you cannot be talking about fighting Boko Haram when we, you are not sincere about it. It was formed and they formed it, and at the same time they had a Sharia law. So Boko Haram is that Sharia government, uh, is the army for Sharia government, and they are there for destroying, the, uh, overriding the Nigerian government, and of course taking over the military base and all that. So they are doing duty for their people, and they are working, and you see them doing it for a reason because of the Islamization agenda. So when you are talking about the legislators not standing up, the executive and uh, the other arms of government not standing up because they are part of the system. They are part who actually uh, help to secure the position for the man in Asorok. How did he come to Asorok? Did he just fly from the air and come to Asorok? Some people planned it. So it wasn't just those two, two people. Those two people have got their men everywhere. They are the leaders on the, of the north. And of course you cannot talk about it without talking about the Sokoto uh, 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 Caliphate. You cannot talk about it without talking about the MS in the north. So when you are looking at this thing, it's not just the uh, to, few people you see there or those gunmen you see in the bush they are the leaders the northern leaders the Fulani Kabas and they are looking for who will say something they are just looking at your mouth and they are looking at the politician who will say something once you say a thing they are coming to your house in the night to shoot and of course that is why when it seems that the people should stand up the only pro uh, solution is what you have the indigenous people of Biafra is, are doing because Biafra is the only solution to, when we say it we say it with every conviction with every blood in us with everything in us because we the only solution to problem that are going on in Africa is Biafra. Why is it that something as serious as this will be happening? Why is it that such kind of wickedness? Because we are looking at wickedness. We are looking at, at cruelty. We are looking at a place that have become the capital of uh, extreme uh, people of extreme poverty. We are looking at a place that have remained undeveloped. That have not can never be developed because there is there is an imposter because there is no government because the, the system has been hijacked by terrorists. And it is running and running smoothly without any opposition because the people fail to stand up. So it, it, this legislature cannot work. The, the no other arms of government cannot work because they have all been hijacked. It, it, it can only take a revolution, which the indigenous people of Biafra, uh, of course, you see with the instrumentality of the truth. And you see that the world bodies are even speaking, the international communities, they are simply coming back to you said, you have to solve your problem. And that is it. We have to take responsibility until we take responsibility, the, uh, this problem cannot be fixed. All right, thank you very much. Until we take responsibility, these problems cannot be fixed. And today we'll have Fanny Kayode speaking on that, and uh, it's very important we we'll read from what um, we have here. So Fanny, Fanny Kayode, the former Minister of Aviation, has dared President Mahmoud Wari to come clean on the allegation that he was replaced by a certain Jubril of Sudan. Fanny Kayode, in an article released on Sunday on his Twitter page, highlighted 15 questions Buhari needs to address to prove allegations by leaders of the Probiafra group, IPOB Namdi Kano, is false. Recall that Kano, since his reappearance in Israel, the penultimate month has been consistent in making weekly expose on the alleged impersonation of dead President Muhammad Buhari by a Sudanese stage play actor, Jubril Aminu al Sudani. The former minister urged Buhari to, help, to hold a two-hour interactive no holds bad live media chat on national television to counter the claim. Yeah, that, that, that is they're going too far. You're talking about two hours. Let him come out and wave to the public. Simple. Imagine that they can the, after the last broadcast. You know that it has become impossible for uh, the, the man in Nasrallah to wave to the public. So to, talking about two hours interactive session, you are even talking about something that is very big, which you know that Jubri cannot do. Simple thing. Come out to the public and wave your hands. Let's see that hand. If it is the hand that we saw that waved at two, in 2015. If it is that same hand that waved. So he cannot do it. You are talking okay. about uh, two hours interactive session. That is too much. Okay, he also challenged Buhari to call out Eric Stout Joyce, the former British um, MP, former Army officer, and former M16 agent, for declaring him dead sometime in 2017 and remove his hat to have his hair examined. Of course, <laughs> we know that Mazinda the Kano said it. Say, look at the Buhari was uh, that we used to know had a bald head, and this one uh, he doesn't have it. So that's why he can't remove the cap. And that is why he cannot wear a suit. So he can't remove the cap. He cannot do any of those things. Okay, except from the article, there is always a hidden truth, an angle, a gray area or an unseen dimension to everything that a Nigerian leader or politician says or does. It is in the light of this that I submit the following. If President Muhammad Buhari really wants us to believe that he is not Jibril Aminu al-Sudani, 
challenge him to have a two-hour interactive no holds bad live media chat on national television i challenge him to take off his hat and let us examine his head and hair i challenge him to let us measure his ears and inspect his earlobes i challenge him to conduct a one-hour non-stop conversation in fufu day the foreign language on national television I challenge him to explain how it is that is now. I challenge him to explain how it is that he is now a good deal shorter in height than he was two years ago. I challenge him to tell us how it is that two years ago he looked like his Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed's grandfather, but today he looks like the minister's grandson. Exactly. I challenge him to explain why he has not been going back to the United Kingdom for regular medical checkups after his miraculous recovery from a strange and debilitating illness that ravaged and wrecked his body and that almost sent him to his grave. I challenge him to call out Eric Stahl Joyce, the former British MP, former Army officer and former M16 agent for declaring him dead sometime last year and for accusing the Nigerian intelligentsia authorities of media, intelligence agencies, and ruling elite of being complicit in the conspiracy and the Nigerian people of being the most gullible and naive in the world. I challenge him to explain why he did not appear with any of the key world leaders in any of his official pictures during his last trip to Paris. I challenge him to explain why President Donald Trump described him as lifeless and ordered his staff never to bring him before him again. I challenge him to explain why the First Lady, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, claims that two faceless, nameless, shadowy, strange, and all-powerful individuals whose shoes other government officials leak are running the affairs of our country and not him. I challenge him to explain why he has refused to give one formal press interview to Nigerian journalists and on Nigerian soil for the last two years. I challenge him to deny the fact that body doubles were often used in the civilized world during the 1960s and 1970s, 1980s and 1990s for security reasons and they often represented presidents, prime ministers and heads of state at official functions and events. Finally, I challenge him to tell us whether it was a coincidence that Habu Almo, the Nigerian Consul General, to the Sudan and NIA agenda allegedly discovered Jubri Aminu al Sudani and Propose him as a credible and convincing body double for the Elin Buhari in 2016. Was suddenly knifed to death in Khartoum in May 2018, just a few weeks after his alleged role in the whole sordid body double saga was made public. Do not believe that Buhari is a clone, but I do believe that the body double allegation and rumor is worthy of our attention and consequently needs to be thoroughly investigated, explored, and examined. Though I cannot vouch for the veracity of this allegation and rumor, one thing is clear. A significant number of Nigerians do not believe that the man in our Sorok Villa is the Buhari that they know. And rightly or wrongly, their perception is that there is something fishy going on. Exactly. So what does it take a few others to kill into what Fanny Kayode is doing? You know, uh, the, the problem that they have is who said it. <laughs> that is the only problem they have. Because they don't want to give credit to Mazen and they can. Because, you know, every discovery in the world, if, if it was uh, uh, maybe President Trump that said it, you know, uh, maybe they would have been. But, you see, because Mazen and the can said it, that is what their problem is. So, had it been it's somebody else anywhere in the world that said it, maybe they would have jumped up and uh, maybe. But because Mazen and the can said it, that is just their problem. And of course, because they know that that is also the truth. And Nigeria has hated truth with everything in them. That tells you how much evil that is, has been going on in the evil contraction they call Nigeria. That tells you what has happened in the past hundred years, how dead Nigeria has been. You see, Africa is in trouble, quite all right. But we know that Nigeria is in a deeper mess, a very deeper... You know when you're talking about Nigeria, the most populous, popular, uh, populous nation in the world? Nigeria is more than... You, you know, census figures are always manipulated. The real figures are more than 200 million. So when you look at the territory that they call Nigeria, more than 200 million people are occupying it. And people are just dying. 
Uh, people are dying out of starvation. Some are dying out of hunger. Some are dying out of you know, just dying unnecessarily. Human beings are dying, and of course, you wonder how people actually survive in this evil contraction. Sometimes you need to see what people feed on. Sometimes you need to see that uh, people can feed from even the from from a recycle bin. Some people go to recycle bin to take food from there and eat to survive. And you wonder it, why should things like this be happening to such a country? A, a place where you have everything available. All the resources are there. All the, the human resources, natural resources, whatever that takes for life to be sweet are there in Africa. But people are dying. Why is it so? Because somebody, some uh, have refused to take responsibility. Until we learn to stand up and ask the relevant questions and um, start do the relevant things, change cannot come. So it's about evil. The love for evil. You know, people just hate, love evil and hate it's good. That is just the difference. So, you see, people don't admit the truth because they don't want to take responsibility. That is why you see that each time somebody is asking you who is coming to help us, they are looking for who is coming to help us. They are looking for the position, okay, what did you, what is UK saying? What is Russia saying? What is uh, Germany saying? That is what people, why don't you take responsibility? Because what is happening, is happening to you. It's not happening there. Of course, they may feel if uh, the effect of it when their people are migrating and running to those countries. That is the highest and they can close their borders. But people here are the ones suffering. So when people don't speak up, those who don't speak up, ask yourself, who are these people? Because they have their houses. Most of them are even uh, with dual citizenship. They have houses in the US. They have houses in London. They have houses all over the world. And their children, their families are there. So the people who are suffering are the common masses. And nobody to speak for them. Until the common masses stand up. And that is why when we say we will not vote in 2019, that, that is the simple answer. When If the people, of course, this evil has been happening. And you see the same people also campaigning, also accepting two cups of rice. That tells you that the, the level of death, the car, you know, when people are, their consciousness has been dealt with more than a hundred years, you have lived in an evil contraction and you were born into it and you just live as if that is the normal life and you travel abroad, you think that you are in heaven. That is what it is because Nigeria is dead and rotten. All right, thank you very much because Nigeria is dead and rotten and something needs to be done as a matter of and the question is, what should be done? Because we, Bia friends, we have done well in exposing the evil going on there. And of course, uh, I think other youths need to stand up to their responsibility rather than talking about 2019 election. You see, uh, uh, apart from the indigenous people of Biafra, look at Africa as a whole. Look at West Africa. Look at the, uh, the geographical location they call Nigeria. And look at the people. Uh, it, you know, people just feel less concerned. They feel that some people should take the responsibility. They never see themselves as the saviors of their families. They never see themselves as anybody uh, whose contribution will count. They feel that, yes, the cabals are in charge and they can work on, that They feel that nothing can be done. And I don't believe that it's possible that nothing can be done. Something can be done. Because one, if Mazen the Kano, just one man can bring such a change within such a period of time. Imagine if there were five Mazen Namde Kano in this West African zone. Imagine if you have uh, in, in the evil contraction they call Nigeria. If there's one Mazen Namde Kano in Lagos, one Mazen Namde Kano in the north, one Mazen Namde Kano in the middle belt. And if, imagine if Mazen Namde Kano is uh, this, uh, uh, you have up to five Mazen Namde Kano in the evil contraction called Nigeria. What change would take place? But there are people like Mazen Namde Kano, but they, never, they will never stand up. They will never take responsibility. Until you start taking responsibility, you will know the power that you have within you because you actually have power within you, but because you don't use it, you dash it to the politicians. You allow the, those that claim to be the cabals. They are simple one person, one human being breathing the same air you are breathing and they don't feed more, more than you feed because of course they cannot take more than they chew more than their, their mouth can carry they cannot sleep more than one bed at night they cannot do more than, they have two heads, they have they have the same life you have so there's no reason why one person should be bigger than the other person we are all human beings, all it takes is people to stand up and take responsibility but that is just what the problem is, until everybody every part is Take, ready to take responsibility. Restore the dignity of your family. That is very important. Restore the dignity of your zone. Because there it is happening, even in Lagos, because of maybe because of the free uh, of the asset, what they are enjoying, you know, from what comes from Biafra land, because of the tax they are collecting. That is why you see the Yorubas are not talking. But very soon it will affect them because we, the indigenous people of Biafra, we are taking responsibility. 
we don't we, we push it to anybody. Mazen Nandekano is leading the pace, and of course, we call on other parts of human, human beings. If you think you are alive, if you think you are human, stand up and behave like a human being. Take responsibility because evil is taking place right before our very eyes, and we don't need anybody to stop it. You can take responsibility, you can bring the change that you've been desiring. So don't wait for anybody to fall from the moon or from, fall from the sky. You are the solution that the generation, this generation, has been waiting for. You are the solution we have in West Africa. All right, thank you very much. Uh, this moment will be going on a short break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. For the love of my country, I really want to wake up from this nightmare. From my cool Nigeria, can't nobody take you away. What we got going on for the love of my country? I traveled everywhere on the face of this earth. There's no place like home. Ooh. Touch me. Shake me, wake me up, love me, hate me, do what you gotta do. I really wanna wake up from this nightmare, then my cool Nigeria, can nobody take you away. What we got going on for the love of our country, I traveled everywhere on the face of this earth, there's no place like home. For the love of mankind, ooh. For the love of freedom, ooh. For the love of Chupu, ooh. For the love of my country, I really wanna wake up from this nightmare. Then my cool Nigeria, can nobody take you away? What we got going on? For the love of a country, I traveled everywhere on the face of this earth. There's no place like home. Britain came like a thief in the night, like a thief in the night. Nigeria came like a thief in the night, like a thief in the night. The boat just came like thieves in the night. Mud rose monsters came like a thief to kill and steal and to keep us down. Kill baby, kill baby, drive for our oil. Drive for our oil, make the world go round. Makes me wonder what the hell is going on. Why are they killing our people for our oil? Nigeria killing their fans for their land. First it was oil, now it's cow colony. Mieti Allah, another terror group. Fulani hands men killing everywhere. Boko Haram too, it's all about the killing. 18 terror come from the north. Nigeria army, never for the war. Killing their Francis, all they're ever known for. Killing their Francis, all they're ever known for. On armed civilians and safe around them. The war looked the other way like it was nothing. United Nations very hypocritical. They ain't saying shit, they are partners in crime. We trust in God, so we still see the light. Hey, they are walking my beer for our spirit. Loved and blessed by God Almighty. Nothing can stop Biafra from coming. Not even Britain killing our people. But drink their friends in bloody cold blood. Britain, go back to where you came from. Man, please don't do what you did on the land. We are freedom town, land of milk and honey. Can nobody take away God from us? Like a thief in the night. Sunrise early news analysis on BFR television, and of course, this moment our lines are open. Call in to make your contribution. What's your take on what is going on? It's very important, very, very important. Call us on Skype, call us on Facebook, call us on our WhatsApp line, and also on our phone line. They are right there on the screen. Tap the screen, and you see the numbers to call. It's very, very important. Okay, looking at the man in Asorok, exposing the man in Asorok. What do you think, um, how do you think other countries of the world, other civilized countries of the world, sees Nigeria presently? Of course, they see Nigeria as rotten as anything, as a, 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 a graveyard. Because if there's anything that you can use to describe Nigeria, it's a, a graveyard. Because it's as if there's no human being, actually. If not that Mazin and the Kano is speaking of, and of course the indigenous people of Biafra. And that is why when you're talking about this uh, area, you know, the line they drew, the only people you can see that have developed a voice is the indigenous people of Biafra. So the, we are the one carrying the flag of Africa, of course, carrying the flag of freedom for the people. But uh, the rest of the people are just keeping mute. You have only a few number of individuals who are speaking up. So that tell, that the international community are just wondering also, 
because uh, there in other countries, if things happen, you see revolutions will take place. It cannot happen in uh, can, can such a thing happen in the US? Can it happen in Canada? Can it happen even anywhere in Europe? It cannot happen because the people will stand up and uh, take uh, take uh, responsibility. Just in France, the other day, well, did, the, did you see the the, uh, the, the uh, protest? And, uh, sister, I'm going to yeah, good morning, sir. We'll have a call on the phone. What's an area you. From? My name is Mazi Peter Ifanyezi, speaking from uh, a boy province of Hedefa Land. I want to appreciate you people this morning. I want to appreciate you on the good work you people are doing for Bia France. Last week out through we were in dark because we could not uh, listen to radio, we could not hear due to some fault or some problems that have uh, arisen then, but they have been corrected. But now we can listen to Radio Biafra, via FM radio stations in Abakleke province. And I want to appreciate you this, uh, this morning. Uh, we've heard uh, about uh, the challenges that uh, Mahazi Kayudi has opted out for the Jubilee, that man in Azurok, he said, I am I'm still myself. I am who I am. That is, uh, he's trying to play God. Knowing fully that he is Jubilee, that is all uh, a, 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 an impostor can say because there is nothing else he can say. He don't have anything to say other than to say that he is himself. Let him come out and show the world that he is Buhari, which he is not. Uh, I want to appreciate uh, Mazen Namdekano. He's a man who sees tomorrow. This is a man who has uh, uh, went uh, far and near to make sure that uh, everything as it pertains to this uh, this impost of Jubil is shown out to the world. We, as it is now, his palms and uh, his voice and his uh, power head and everything can show to the world that he is Jubil. He is not Buhari. Buhari is dead last year, January 2017. And he cannot tell the world that he is Buhari because he is not. There is nothing that he can show. There is no nothing. There is no pretense. All he's doing is just to, to, to show the world that he is still. It's only the cabal that is, uh, that is trying to uh, protect their, their, their money. Let him come out. Let us rise because we are fed up in this contraction they call Nigeria. Sister, please continue with the good work you people are doing because I really appreciate Amazi Uriako. Like I used to appreciate my, my friend, uh, Chika Austin. Anytime he comes up to say something, he always says it to the way that the world will, 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 will be impressed. My sister, move on with the good work. I appreciate you. I remember the Peter Ifanyezi. The, uh, the deputy media coordinator at uh, Boy Province. Thank you, my sister. God Thank bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Of course, our lines are open. Call us on Skype, call us on Facebook, call us on WhatsApp, and let's hear your own, um, let's know your own view on what is happening. Hello, call on WhatsApp. Hello? Yeah, good morning. Welcome to the program. Yeah, hello. Good evening. This is um, Chima. I'm calling from um, United States, Las Vegas. You're welcome. Good morning from here. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. Um. I want just I want to keep one or two things. Um. As regards to what our brother in the studio is, um has said. Um. Nigeria, we Nigeria is in a big mess. Nigeria is in a very serious mess. The um, um, the whole world powers they know that the person in Asurok is not the president of Nigeria. But being the fact that Nigeria is a sovereign state, there is nothing they can do. They they, they need to respect the power of sovereignty. You, you don't expect United um, States of America to come and say, "Oh, okay, hey, you better go away from there." This, no. It is the people in Nigeria that will start the revolution. Just like just like one or two instances Mazin and Bikano gave about um, some countries that um, they were having um, issues 
they were not democratic when the, when United Nations were, when United States were dealing with these countries. The president of these countries were not democratically elected president. But when the people revolt, when there was a revolution, the United States had to go with the people because that is what they are. They practice true democracy. Democracy is for the people. It's not for the government. It's for the people, by the people, and for the people. So when they started the revolution, the United States had to back the people. They had to tell the guy, see, um, based on our standard, we are a democratic nation. On. We have to go with the people, so you have to give way. So that is the same thing. The same thing they anticipated of Nigerians, but but due to the fact that Nigeria has a population of over 90 million daft illiterates, they, there can never be a revolution in Nigeria. But I'm not including Biafrans. Biafrans are not Nigerians. They are too learned. We are too smart to be to be part of this this nonsense. We are not part of this nonsense. So the the the, 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 uh, the uh, um, British British government self-serving British politicians and Nigerian uh, um, um, cabals, the Fulani cabals, they knew very well that there are so there, the level of illiteracy in Nigeria is much that there, there can never be a revolution in Nigeria for other world powers to come and ask what is happening. So that is why I said Nigeria is in a big, big serious heavy mess. Look at what Femi Fanika they said. He's not trying to play or win, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, score any political, political, uh, um, or how do I put it, political gain or whatever. He's just saying the truth. But they cannot do anything. Their hands and legs are tied. What do you want to do? They can't do anything. The only solution to Nigeria problem is fiscal federalism, which is Aburia Accord. But and I know it will happen. Talking about Boko Haram and the rest. What Boko Haram demands is fiscal federalism. They want to declare Sharia in the northern part of Nigeria, just like this, the Kano state government just did. They, they destroyed over one million bottle of beer. Why these people collect VAT from tax, uh, 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 gotten from from the sales of alcohol in the whole state of Nigeria? They got the whole share of, of the tax, but they, they destroyed one million uh, and bottle of beers. Who owns those shops? They destroyed those beers. Those shops that that sells those beer, those bottle uh, uh, alcohol drinks in the northern part of Nigeria. Beer France. They are indirectly dealing with us economically in that place. And the what is what Boko Haram wants? They want this kind of federalism to declare state of Sharia in that place to govern themselves the way they want. Not that part, we govern we want. But due to the fact that the Fulani cabals they control virtually all the oil wells in our place, the crazy Fulani cabals, they will not allow that to happen. So the only solution to the Nigeria problem is Biafra. That is why they are scared of human becoming. They've never seen anybody like Nam the, the The level at which okay, let me tell you, let me tell you this for free. I never knew about self-determination. To be honest with you, I never heard. I've never heard about self-determination. But Nam the Kanu made me. I started research. I started googling. I started reading about self-determination. Then I discovered that Britain left the United uh, uh, European Union via self-determination, via re referendum. Scottish government, the same thing. So that is why Nigerian government and the British government they are so scared of Inam the Kano because they thought Inam the Kano will, will go the same route of, of Uazurike. Inam the Kano is a very learned person. So the, the, the corner at which Inam the Kano has pushed Nigerian government is a corner at which they cannot they, 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 they cannot run away from. They, they are strapped. They are strapped Nigerian government. So that is the only solution for Nigerian problem. Biafra. Nothing else. Talking about our religious leaders, I'm sorry to say this. Our religious leaders are more, are, they, are, they, are, they are worse than our political leaders. The, the, two, the two basic problems Nigerians are facing right now is one, re, re, religious slavery and political slavery. So our religious leaders in the, in the Bible, Apostle Paul and the rest, they speak for Christians. They fight for, they fight for, for their brethren. But our, you see, can going to Abuja to go and endorse the president. Look at what Farabaka said the other Farabaka just literally embarrassed himself. A whole reverend father. Your mask is there. You, you've got so many people, unemployed people there. People that they've not even eaten for this. They don't, they are, they've got no hope on how they're going to feed. You're there begging money from B2B. Begging money from 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 um, Buhari. Endorsing B2B. Endorsing Buhari. The B2B, the old, the, so, some some people are clamoring for now. There is an economist, there is a technocrat. Remember this MP to be, this MP to be, that is why the outside they accepted P2B. 
PJB because he killed our people at his dumped them at his river. This same PJB we are clamoring for is so good. He debated the flood of Sibanjo and this and that. This same PJB has done the beating of the Fulanis by killing our people, killing his own people, his own brothers, killing them and dumping them at his river. So there is no leader in our place. We've got no leader. The only leader we have in our place is Nam Dekano. That is why they are all overwhelmed. They have not seen something like that before. The, the pattern is the, the pattern he has brought in the actualization of this sovereign state of Biafra, they have not seen before. So I I want to encourage all Biafrans. We are almost there. There is no two ways about it. Over here in America, I'm surprised that he, he, one of the white guys I was working I was working for, he mentioned Biafra. I was so shocked. Then I was like, wow. This stuff has already got in here. I never mentioned Biafra. You just asked me where I came from. I said I came from Nigeria. But even though I'm not in Nigeria, I came from a part called Biafra. He said he has, he has heard about Biafra and he has, he has heard about what the, the Fulanis, the Islamic Fulanis have been doing to the southern part of Nigeria. I said, well, he said there is no solution. The only solution to it is to wage war with these people. The only thing they understand is violence. Gone. Bullet. That is what they understand. He was so angry, although he was ex military. So he was, I was like, so far, like, wow, you've already heard about Biafra and all that. So we are almost there. It has gone viral. Everybody knows about us now. Our, we, they, they know we are peaceful. They know we are diplomatic. They know we are learned. But and on the other hand, they know that Nigerian government is frustrating us. They are pushing us to the point of whereby we will resist. And when we get to that, when we get to that point where we will resist, when we resist, the world will support us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Of course, uh, before the world come in to save Nigeria, Nigerians should be able to stand up to their responsibilities. Exactly. He has actually spoken well because if you look at the condition, it's no longer a case of uh, whether the world know. The international community oh, yeah. are aware of what is happening. And of course, uh, it's also very clear that Mazinam the Kanu took his time. You know, it, had it been Mazinam the Kanu, a lot of people that have been talking nonsense didn't understand. Mazinam the Kanu took time, and he's so patient, and he began to lecture, he began to teach, and that is why you see the strategy of Mazinam the Kanu cannot be beaten because he knew that the, so the people have been confused religiously and politically. And of course, you know why we talk about revolution and it can never take place? It's because why politicians are busy, of course, looting. The church is there and, of course, preaching a different thing. And you see the poor feeding the rich. You see the poor whose children cannot go to school, contributing money for a, a priest to buy private jets and, of course, building schools for them. And the children of these poor widows will not attend these schools. So that was the kind of place, that was the kind of thing that was happening. And, of course, Mazin and the Kanu, within a very short time, has began, uh, opened our eyes and all those nonsense are beginning to stop. All right, call on WhatsApp. Hello. Hello. Yes, good morning. What's the name you are calling from? Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Hello. Okay, I think you are not listening. Sorry, you have to call back. Sorry about that. Um, before you call on this platform, please ensure you turn down the volume of your listening device. Very important. Call on the phone. Hello. Hello, call on the phone. Well, that's the call. Um, probably that could be a network issue. Okay, so go ahead. Of course. So when you look at the ills, the evil that has been done to us, our people have been robbed psychologically, our people have been robbed physically, our people have been robbed from all angles, politically, religiously. And of course, you see, education-wise also, you see what has happened. So because the same, uh, if you look at the educational system, it has also been hijacked by religious bodies. Today, you have more religious uh, universities, more than you have the secular universities. Hello, Colin, what's up? Nicola, what's up? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning from here. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Amala. I'm calling from Bayasta State, here in Brafran Land. Good to know. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to air my view based on the fact that you hear some of our people here saying that we are not Biafra we have nothing to do with Biafra and so on for me those um, kind of uh, 
um, statement is a trash because when you come to our region and see what is happening my sister my brother you will, you will, you will be crying every day we are the indigenous people that own the oil in Biafra land but we have nothing to write home about then somebody will be there telling you we are not Biafra we are not this, we are not that we are this, we are that we are that, perhaps we have nothing to show up when you come to our region we are being molested, harassed in fact, so many evil that we cannot mention and that is why we are happy with Mazen and the Kano who at this point let us know that there is hope so I want our people to wake up and I am speaking to all the the so called South South to wake up because in then days when we are all the in the eastern region state there was nothing like south south and we are doing well everybody produce what they have like in those days we have the 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 the, the, the cocoa the, the the timber here we have the palm oil here. we are doing our farming until this fulani enhancement our fulani came with our wet to come and deal with us in such a way that we cannot even rise so i want our people to rise up let us see the fact that nande kano is doing a great job and we should key on we should help him so that we can be free the moment we are free we have the freedom to do whatever thing that we want to do with our resources so we should not be deceived and i want to assure and the Kano, we from the river line coast we are behind him anybody tell you we are not Biafra we are not this know that such a person is our enemy and those are the politicians that are killing us thank you because I am not happy each thank time I speak much. I speak with thank bitterness you very much. well it's a done deal we all are going we cannot leave our brothers behind very important okay the lines are open colors on whatsapp colors on skype on facebook and of course at the red line i'll call our whatsapp line right now especially for the benefit of those who are listening via the radio uh, it's good you pick it um, you write it down while i call it so that you can always go there and get it our whatsapp line is plus two three four nine zero five six six zero eight five eight three our whatsapp number is plus two three four nine zero five six six zero eight five eight three then now the red phone line is plus two three seven zero two zero three five three seven zero six i repeat plus two three four seven zero two zero three five three seven zero six call in to make your contribution call on whatsapp hello good morning Ungo. good morning what's the guy uh, calling morning, from Mazio, Rako, right good morning welcome to the program i greet you people i'm very very proud of the job you guys are doing. Almighty oh, Chico Kikadam, I will continue to bless you. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, too. My name is Chico Mugo, calling from Ghana. I want to contribute based on uh, what is happening in the zoo for Nigeria. Nigeria is a zoo. And when we call Nigeria, we will make no mistake about that. Because it has expired. A country where, where human being is not valued. A country where human being is not appreciated. A country where cows is valued more than human being. What is happening in Nigeria today is as a result of all the comforted lies and atrocities committed by the British and their slave master, our South Line. I thank God for our leader, Mazen Nam De Kano. If not for him, I don't know what we would have done. Honestly speaking, my brother, when you when you travel outside Nigeria, you see that our people are, suffer, are suffering. 
Our people are really, really suffering just to earn a living. If you go to some African countries, they are all flooded in different prisons. We need, we need this Biafra so that we'll come back home. I tell you the truth. We really need this Biafra so that we'll come back home. Nigeria, Nigeria is evil forest, I tell you. There is nothing working in that country. Everything is upside down. I even wonder why our people are shouting, Obi, 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 Obi. I don't know what is wrong with some Igbo people, honestly speaking. Honestly, up to this point, they cannot see the handwriting on the wall. Uh, these people, they don't like us. The only thing that will save us is Biafra. Without Biafra, we are doomed. If you like, have 100 stories. If you like, I have skyscraper. Without Biafra, we are finished, honestly speaking. Ngo, I thank you, people. Mazi Oriaku Bright, I thank you for your good work. Almighty, yeah, we will continue to bless you, people. Thank you so much. We'll have a call on the phone. Hello, call on the phone. <coughs> Okay, we lost the call, we lost the call, so go ahead. So, you see, uh, we keep emphasizing something, that we must take responsibility. Things don't just happen. We must take responsibility because, uh, you know, something is wrong when there is a problem and you have adults who are supposed to speak up, who are supposed to take responsibility and are not taking responsibility. Hello, we'll call on WhatsApp. Hello, good morning. Thank you, good morning from here. Good morning, dear friends. Uh, this is uh, Ike Chiku Onora, coming from Italy. Uh, it's for some time I haven't been recorded for some reasons. Please, I yeah. greet everybody and uh, I just want to make a throwback on what we should continue to remind the people who are conspiring in covering this debris of a thing. That by the time the truth will come out, both Aisha Bukhari and every of them who are part of this conspiracy, all of them are going to jail. Without reminding them, they will not know. Just keep on telling them that they cannot say they didn't know about them. Yet. All of them, both the family of uh, Bukhari and every, every of the people that contributed in this conspiracy, all of them are going to jail. So that earlier they come out to speak out the truth, it's better for them to free themselves. Thank you, and that's what I want to add up this morning. Thank God you. bless Biafra. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Of course, they can't hide him forever. Yeah, of course, it can only take Biafra to uh, restore peace in Africa. Because such evil can only happen and happen in Africa. We have seen terrible things, but uh, we have never seen a situation as worse as it is today in the evil contraction called Nigeria, where you have an impostor, a Sudanese, sitting in Asorok, and he's sitting comfortably, and of course eating and drinking, consuming what belongs to 200 million people. And of course, what they have stolen, you know, when the British took the lion's share, and of course, leave, leave the crumb for the rest of the people, then the uh, uh, Sudanese, the Sudanese also who come and take the remaining crumb that is remaining and the rest 200 million people are suffering in deep pain people are sleeping without food why is it so you see uh, what is happening is so bitter it's so painful because sometimes you think about it you ask yourself am i really alive you need to pinch yourself to see, discover that you are really alive to witness that something like this is happening in our very eyes and it's like stories like one of those things you watch imaginary imaginary stories you watch in movie but it's, it's happening in real life and it's happening and a man is sitting comfortably in that sorrow more than a year you know since 2017 general up until it's got, in, the, in the next uh, few days it will be two years and it's sitting in Asorok and the people are quiet over it hello what's up hello hello yes good morning what's the name coming hello hello we can hear you go ahead hello hello come on what's up can you hear me yes I can hear you then go good on. morning can you hear me? Thank you for not listening. Uh, he's listening via his device. Call on the phone. Hello. Hello, good morning. Hello, call on the phone. Can you hear me? Hello, I'm going to turn it to you. say? Hello. I don't know if you're coming outside. Yes, you are. But we need to know your name and where you are 
Kalinsu. Uh, okay. My name is Kalinsu Stokume. I'm calling you from Lagos State. But certainly, I mean, Anamba State. I just traveled. Okay. Um, I would probably like to use my locality. Igbo. Go ahead. Because Igbo is a So, I don't make any moves. You see, you cannot number one. I'm not sure. 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 I'm not I'm governor Somebody Yabulo <laughs> Okay. <laughs> ndo <laughs> My brother and my sister, total freedom. Total freedom. No more going back. All the work, Take <laughs> Hello, <laughs> So I'm free and I'm okay with this. I have to go out. My name is Kamiru Sogume. I'm from Obago, of local government area of Enugu State. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll have a call on WhatsApp. Hello. 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 Yeah, good morning from here. Welcome to the program. Yeah. Good morning. Um, my name is uh, Uzo Chuku. I'm calling from Germany. You're welcome. Go ahead. 
I thank you guys for what you're doing for our people. I really appreciate it. I, I just want to uh, make some contribution, personal opinion though. So uh, my contribution is I want uh, in a situation where our leader will uh, try to call on uh, the world leaders, especially Donald Trump, the UN, the British, uh, the, the uh, ICC, International Criminal Court, all over the places. Uh, this Jibril has gone to represent Nigeria. This impose that he there. used, to, he need to call upon them to cancel all the whole agreement they made with them because this is a crime against humanity. How can the the, the United Nations who, who uh, claim that they, they are representing human rights in the world accept an imposter to come and shake hands with them, uh, sign agreement with them, and the, all of them keep quiet? They are not talking, even though the Nigerian people are not talking. They're supposed to rise. They are not rising. What about them? Somebody fake himself, come to you people, sign agreement, die with you people. It's, it's a slap on their face if they keep quiet. They, they think that they are doing all this against Biafra. They are doing it to themselves because if they don't act now, one country, one day, we do the same thing. Bring an imposter to impose it on their people and they have nothing to say about it. So if they cannot arrest Buare, then they should free Chastello. And all the whole African leaders they are they are holding in in, in, in uh, a criminal uh, court in, in in Holland. They should free all of them because they have never committed crime more than what Buari and Chipri did. Look at the whole uh, 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 people they have killed in Nigeria and still killing. Yeah, an imposter for that matter. So if they cannot do something about it, I mean the United Nations and the, the U.S. Donald Trump, all of them, they should call on ICC to release all the whole African people they, they are holding there because none of them have committed half of what Buari and Jibril have done. So I don't see the reason why they are holding them if they cannot call on the international community and UN to arrest Buari because it's a slap on the on the world face, not only only Africa, the world itself. Because this man has paraded, come in UN Parliament to tell Israel to free Palestine, to tell them what to do. An imposter telling the world what to do, unelected uh, figure. I think uh, they, they should cover themselves in, in shame. I think our leaders should emphasize on this and attack them directly. If they cannot do something about it, shame on them. Chileka, all of them are cool. Why, where is this world going? Now, if you are evil, now the world prays you. But if you are a good person, everybody wants to kill you. Everything happening in the world now, they keep quiet. United Nations, but they did themselves as if they are their human rights organization. Only one representative. short, I'm, I'm very happy. Let me give you an example. If they cannot arrest this man and do something about it, they should free everybody in prison and stop all this rubbish they are doing, claiming that they are fighting human rights. Right. Hello, call on the phone. Hello, good morning. Good morning. What's the name I'm calling I'm calling from Ghana. Please, don't go ahead. I'm not going to call you. 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 I'm not going to because I because the guy is how many twenty million? people Thank you very much. Bless you too. Thank you very much. Of course, we have just a few minutes to go, and of course, um, 
We will be bringing voice of the people to you after now. But before we go, Maziraq, what message do you have for your friends? Okay, Sarah, we'll have a call on WhatsApp. Hello, call on WhatsApp. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Welcome to the program. Hello. Hello, what's the name you are calling from? Hello, good morning from here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Am I coming clear? Loud and clear. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, my name's Choko uh, Deopa. I'm calling from Germany. Yeah, I want to use this opportunity to thank the fellow beer friends all over the world. To thank IPOB special. They, they, they have did a very marvelous job upon the struggle. And I pray that may Chuko Kikabiyama keep guiding and protect every one of them. You see? Personally, my regards to Mazi MMK, Azina De Kahlo, and his deputy, which I met for. In fact, those, those two guys, they are just God sent to their friends. You know, may God keep empower them, increase their knowledge. Yes. And once again, I want to use this opportunity. My Igbo speaking brothers, please, please and please, you people should try to know where you belong and try to know where you came from. You know, you can't be in a country, you called on your country.